Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of the 72-73-71 TR6. <laughs> if you've watched the previous episodes, you know why I'm saying that. It's a mix of uh, ears and it's from the factory. I don't think any of the owners made the mix. It was like this from the factory, but anyways, I believe this is going to be the final episode about it. Uh, I think it's going to be sixth, if I'm not wrong and it's gonna be about tuning the engine. In the previous episodes, I think there are three episodes about wiring, so we dealt with a lot of wires in this uh, Triumph. We were gonna replace the harness, but turned out we have the wrong harness for it. So we just decided to fix what we had, and I think we did a good job with it. We worked a little bit on the suspension, and I also replaced here in the front the water pump, the thermostat, the temperature sender, the gasket on the exhaust and intake manifolds was uh, gone. So there was an exhaust leak and I'm pretty sure there was also an intake leak because the car was running horrible. So now the gasket is changed and I took also apart the carburetors, changed some of the seals and o-rings and stuff like that and gaskets. And now... I just finished replacing bushings on the front suspension, just the upper control arm bushings and the bow joints. I didn't film that. I know I've done a lot of videos about front suspension on TR6, so I didn't film it. But without further ado, let's see if we can start the engine now and get crack -a locking with it. It hasn't been started after I took the manifolds out and the carbs out, so now I have to prime the system a little bit. I'm gonna go on the other side and with the lever here on the fuel pump i'm hoping to be able to prime it i can hear it coming okay that should be enough so i'm gonna set you on the tripod now we can open that door because we are blocked here and i don't want to move this car because david is gonna come anytime to work on it so we're gonna open that door and we're gonna put a fan hopefully hopefully we're gonna be able to breathe here okay so we are ready the door is open i'm gonna turn the fan on and let's see if she's gonna start the like i said the carbs have been taken apart and put back together and i just adjusted the needle heights at like uh, the level of the barrel underneath that's just initial adjustment but it should start because the ignition was set kind of properly before it was starting we adjusted the timing a little bit and it was starting and running kind of okay so she shouldn't have any trouble starting now How come? Forgot about this part here. It has been open for, I don't know, more than 24 hours now. So I'm surprised that the battery is not totally dead. Wow. Anyways, it's gonna need a little bit of boost. Okay, let's try that again. Assuming she's a little bit too lean, which is fine, we're gonna adjust that. Well, that's, uh, that's WD-40 on the exhaust pipe, because I had to soak the bolts to take it apart, so now it is smoking. Anyways, let's start it again.
arrived. It's actually the next day and we took out the Spitfire. So now it's gonna be easier for me to tune up the engine a little bit. And as you can see, she's running pretty rough still. So what we're gonna start with is the, the ignition system. And um, we're gonna change some of the components already because the owner brought new spark plugs and new coil. So I don't know if these are bad or not, but why not start with new ones fresh? And I think also the distributor cup needs to be changed. I have ordered a new one. I will show you now. Okay. Let's take out the distributor cup. I want to show you. So that's number one. I always check where number one is because sometimes when people take out distributors and the drive gear for the distributor, they don't position it properly. And on some cars, I've seen cars where the number one cylinder ends up here or here or here so before i take out the, the wires i always make sure to know where number one is so i don't need to look for it after that so number one is here so first i'm gonna change the distributor cup because i believe that that's one of the main reasons why she's running so bad if you look at this here let's go somewhere to the light so this contact, for example, is pretty rough. This one as well, this one as well, this one as well. Well, all of them are pretty bad. I don't know how well you see there, but they're all pretty rough. So we're gonna install a new cup. I have a new cup here and look at this. Old ones new ones so let's start with that okay we have a small problem here this is the new coil the one that the owner brought and it says 1.5 ohm which means it's for a six volt system so this needs to be run through a resistor wire so for the old cars we have three ohm coil which is perfect for a 12 volt system for later cars, they started using 1.5 ohm coil, which runs through a resistor wire, which adds the missing 1.5 ohm. So it's basically again 3 ohm uh, between the coil and the resistor wire. And, and that's how the car runs. But only for the starting moment, when uh, we're cranking the car, there's a relay here, which bypasses the resistor wire and gives 12 volt directly to the 1.5 ohm, which increases the current. So now we're having much stronger output of the coil, only while you're cranking. As soon as you let go of the key, when the car starts, the resistor wire comes in place again, and now the coil becomes 3 ohm. But this car doesn't have a resistor wire. It's an early car, doesn't use a resistor. So 1.5 ohm coil is gonna burn really fast if we connect it there. So I just wanted to double check and as you can see here, it's exactly 1.5 ohm, so we can't use it. So I decided to check our coil to see what our coil, the existing coil is, and it's less than 1 ohm. It's actually 1 ohm, or 0 0.9, which is not good. We need 3 ohm coil, so <laughs> obviously that's a problem there. So we need a new coil but this one we can't use so what we're gonna do is let's hook up the the scope and see what it's gonna show us for the kv because i'm sure with this coil we're not having the right spark so we have six cylinders so enter four cycle and the order is one five three six two four primary menu initially and see the primary waveform so we're not gonna go into details how everything works here because it's been discussed in previous videos I can uh, put the link here to a video that explains how exactly the machine works and what we're looking and what we're doing here I'm just gonna say that for the primary circuit we're interested in the dwell period which is 29 for cylinder number one, 29 degrees, 
and the dwell period starts after this drop here. This is when the electronic ignition closes the circuit for the primary circuit and then this is where it opens and that causes this spike into the coil, into the primary winding of the coil, which causes the spike into the secondary winding of the coil, which causes the spark to go. So we're interested only in this period from here to here. So it goes from here, goes out of the string, comes here and ends here. That's our dwell period. And we're looking for a nice and smooth line, which it is for cylinder number one, but let's check the other cylinders. Number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. We have pretty good dwell period. With electronic ignition, the primary waveform looks pretty good. So let's look at the secondary, which is going to show us now what's happening in the secondary circuit. Here we are interested in this period where the spike happens, and then this period here, from here to here, is when we have a spark sustained inside the cylinder on the spark plug. So let's go again to cylinder number one. I think our spark line here is very shaky. So that shows internal resistance of the spark plugs or the filed spark plugs or not good spark plugs. So we're gonna change them. But also here we can see how many kilowatts our coil ignites here in the secondary circuit. And that's pretty high, 38, 30, like 40 is pretty high. And that's because we have very low resistance of the coil. So let's see, number one, that's number two. So let's see, number one, two, very inconsistent line here, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's all inconsistent. But we can also go to the secondary menu we can do the burn time bar graph, which is basically the spark line length. And look how long it is. It needs to be between one and two, ideally around 1.5 milliseconds. I believe this is because we have pretty high voltage in the coil. So let's actually check that as well. We can go to the KV bar graph and see how many KV we have for each cylinder and we're going around 40 and above 40 and etc etc so that's way too high so we're gonna have to find another coil all right so i have these two engines here tr6 they are from an early car i believe they're 69 and 70 one is over there if you can see it and this one still had a coil on it and uh, these are just sitting in my shed one day i'm gonna probably rebuild them and eventually sell them so if you're in need of a tr6 engine i can rebuild one of these for you and you can have it but anyways one of them still had the coil so i took it out but it turned out it was one and a half volts again so i came to my own tr6 here which is waiting patiently for restoration and i took the coil from mine which is three ohms so so here's our selection of coils. So this is the original one that came off the car and it is one ohm. Well, now it died. So this was showing one ohm on the car, but now it actually shows, yeah. Yeah, and it's one ohm. So garbage. This one is the new one, but unfortunately it's one and a half ohms. Come on. 1.6 1.5 so it is a good new coil but it's not for our application this one hold on this is the one that i took out from this engine the loose engine and it is one and a half as well i should have measured it before i took it out i just assumed it was three ohm but it wasn't so finally this is the one from my tr6 And this one is, come on, and this one is 3.4. Yeah, that's the normal, 3.2, 3.4 sometimes. So we're going to put this one temporarily. It's a good used coil, but we're going to recommend to the owner to buy 
a new one that is 3 ohm for non-ballasted systems. So let's install this one and go from there. Okay, so the negative from the electronic ignition goes of course to the negative side of the coil. The positive goes to the positive side. Our ignition wire is gonna come here. I'm gonna bend this a little bit like this. Okay, and that's our ignition wire. Well, while we're here, let's also change the spark plugs as we have new ones and uh, see if also our spark line is gonna improve. Okay, I took the spark plugs as well out and they look surprisingly good actually for the car running so bad for the for this rough idle i mean we only run it here anyways um we're gonna install the new ones we have brand new champions that the owner gave us rn9yc so we're gonna install these we're gonna gap them we're gonna make sure that the gap is 0 025 and we will see how she's gonna run with them all right new spark plugs are in Secondary wave form. Okay, that's a better KV now. 18, 20, let's see all of them. So KV bar graph, let's see what is gonna show here now. Okay, that's exactly where we want to be. That's much better. And let's see the, the burn time. Fantastic. Now we are all, they're all between 1.5 and 2, which is great. Okay, let's look at the actual waveform, the secondary one. Let's make it wider. Okay, so we still have some oscillations here at the end. But I think that's because we're running a little bit too rich. That's one, two, three. This one is not great. Four, five, and six. Okay. Doesn't look too bad, but we still have those oscillations, you see, that's because we have an even burn inside, uh, I think we should lean her a lot. Okay, before we deal with the carburetors, I decided to take it for another test drive and see how the timing is going. So I'm stopping every once in a while and I'm just giving it a little bit of advance, a little bit of retard, until I think now I set it up to a pretty good Okay, so we're back and the spark plugs are out and you see they are too clean. I mean, that is that means that we're running lean. We need a little bit more fuel in our air fuel ratio. So first of all, we're gonna try to equalize the carbs because after I stole them, I just visually align them but uh, we want to equalize the airflow and then we're going to make the fuel ratio a little bit richer than what it is now actually pretty even so we're not gonna touch it let's just make it a little bit richer and yes I did put oil here it's a ATF automatic transmission fluid that's what I like to use so let's see now where we are okay so lefty leany, righty richy, right? So I'm gonna turn it one full turn. Where is it? Okay. 
one full turn on this one as well. And I'm gonna go for another test drive. <laughs> That's how I like to adjust the fuel ratio because if I trust the method where you lift the piston a little bit, the air pump or whatever that is, air valve, um, I just don't trust it anymore. It runs always rich. So, okay, let's go for another test drive. Okay, after another test drive, I took only the first and six, and they're still a little bit too clean. We're looking for a little bit of brownish color and we still don't have that so i think we're gonna turn another so i think we're gonna make another turn towards towards the rich side and this one is even cleaner too white but this time you know what i also have the speedometer cable so i'm gonna touch the speedometer cable so we can test that in the meantime all right we enriched the fuel ratio by one turn again and we run the cable here the new cable and this time i fished it through above the transmission which is actually a better way and it makes a pretty nice curve here that's pretty normal without uh angle drive so let's see if it is gonna work like this time there's a little bit of come on it's hot though I can't take it out but anyways you can see a little bit of brownish color started coming in eh, maybe a little bit more we need so I'm gonna do one last half turn and that's gonna be it one last test that I want to do is the cylinder test menu we want to see how even the compression is we can't measure the compression itself with this scope, but we can see how even it is. The scope can calculate exactly when the power stroke of each cylinder is. So the scope can see how much the starter motor draws for each cylinder to overcome the compression and compare them. So for that, we need to go to cranking ups bar graph. Here we need to uh, zero the amp probe. And now we can start um, the test so start test now we have to crank for 10 seconds and the machine is gonna kill all the cylinders almost so it's gonna sound like it is gonna start but it won't start until it does all the calculations and then and then it's gonna allow me to start it so let's go What does it show? Hmm, pretty even. Wow, look at that. So we don't know what the compression is, but it is pretty even. 125, 231, so within six amps. I don't know that what that is equal to in, in PSI, but it is pretty even. Well, that I think is where we're gonna leave it. Engine wise, we're not gonna touch anymore. I'm gonna assemble the carbs. I think she runs pretty well, she drives good, she idles pretty good. It doesn't sound even because of the exhaust. It's like going But once we change the exhaust, I'm gonna start it again. You'll see it's actually running pretty smooth. It's idling pretty well. And 
that's it then i'm gonna have to still install the transmission cover the radio and the speakers and everything that goes there and like i said the only other thing that we need to do is to install the not new but other <laughs> the other one used exhaust which is also uh, no it's not cracked i thought it was cracked but looks good so anyways i'm gonna wait for the exhaust to cool down so in the meantime i'm gonna assemble everything here in the front and then i'll bring you back well unfortunately guys it is a few days later now that i'm editing the video and the car is already delivered and i just realized that i didn't film an ending for this video somehow i don't know why the only thing that i filmed is this little clip of what came out of uh, this other used exhaust that i installed in the car <laughs> once i started it it went puff and anyways that's what came out of it but anyway the car is gone everything that we were supposed to do on it was done and uh, the owner was pretty happy i believe so that's gonna be the end of this video series and we're gonna continue with something else at some point and maybe what you see behind me or I don't know, we'll see what we're gonna do. I have lots of videos that I need to edit and upload, including people keep asking about the Miata. Yeah, the Miata is, uh, we're making a little bit progress on the Miata with uh, Nick. So there are, I believe, two or three videos that are shot, but I haven't edited and posted them yet because I just don't have the time. But anyways, uh, I'm rambling. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for commenting, subscribing, sharing, and supporting me financially. You can uh, find all the details about how to support the channel in the description below. And I'm just going to say it quickly again. The financial support is uh, not mandatory in order to see all my content or to see it early because everything is free and everything is available for everyone as soon as I upload it the financial support is a little way for you to say thank you Aileen if you feel like it but if you don't feel like it or you can't afford it that's not a problem you can still see everything at the same time as everybody's seeing it um, and you're not missing on anything so rambling again so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye